Welcome to my channel, my name is Luke, thank you very much for watching, do appreciate it. Hopefully you're having a fantastic day. That'd be good if I get my words out, wouldn't it? Hopefully you're having a fantastic day. We are currently on the M4 and we are heading towards Nuffield, which is uh, near RAF Benson. We are in a little, little tiny DAF LF, uh, a little baby 12 and a half ton truck. <laughs> it's tiny. Uh, Oh, they've got hard at I didn't even realise there was hard at. Um, this is agency work, uh, so it's just for the day. Um, they did want a driver for tomorrow as well, but uh, annoyingly, I had work planned with another agency and uh, it got cancelled. It got cancelled yesterday. Uh, today's Thursday, by the way. So uh, Wednesday, my Friday shift got cancelled. So I messaged this company, the, the work I'm doing, yeah, the guys I'm doing this work for, said I'm now free Friday, and they'd already booked out to another driver. So I've actually lost a day's work, basically, because um, I could have worked tomorrow with this company if the other company didn't cancel my shift. So, well, they didn't cancel it. The, the actual company we were doing the work for did. So either way, I've lost money. So not good, but never mind. That's the joys of agency working, I suppose, and being signed on with different agencies. Um, so yeah, we're, we're on our way to Nuffield, um, which is near RAF Benson, and then after that we've got to go to Tame, and then after that I believe just head back, I think we're done for the day. Had a very, 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 very late start today, didn't start until 8 o'clock, and it's only half past 9 now, and um, with regards to payload, like I said, it's just the two deliveries we got, it's one tiny pack of, uh, we've got timber on, I should probably say, timber. Um, it's got one one tiny pack which I believe has got to be handballed off uh, at the first drop, which by the way is proper tight roads. And I know I say that all the time, but this is so tight, you wouldn't dream of getting an Arctic down there, put it that way. So in the back of my head, it's like, whoo, that's going to be tight. But I am assuming they can get this truck down all right, which you can see. Um, so the first drop is there, and then the second drop in Tame, the, the lot's coming off, the whole thing by a forklift. So hopefully it should be a very easy day. I said before I left on my coming back to the yard, and they said, no, you might need to go to our other branch in a different different town. So, I don't know, we need to wait and see before we uh, head straight back. But uh, yeah, little tiny daff, little tiny loads. Let's go. <laughs> So we're about half an hour away or so from where we need to be. Um, we've gone via the M4 and then on the A34. We're just coming off here to uh, cut across the 423. And uh, yeah, I'm a little bit concerned actually on uh, one or two things. So firstly, the fuel gauge was on three quarters of a tank before I left. I've been driving for an hour and I'm on under half a tank. So it's, <laughs> it's using the fuel very fast. Getting the gear. Um, I've just been speaking to uh, the guys, the, the other road legends, so Scott Andrews, Trucker J in the UK, Kev T, and Trucker Jenko, and uh, they're telling me that DAFs are, DAF LFs are notorious for uh, the fuel gauge not giving you the correct reading. So. It's a little bit concerning because I don't want to run out of fuel, <laughs> obviously, in the gear. Uh, so yeah, we'll have to see. I've been given a, a, a fuel card, so if I have to get fuel somewhere I can, it has to be a BP though. So we'll wait, I'll wait until it goes down to quarter and then sort of judge the situation from there. But yeah, obviously I could drive manual cars so this is exactly the same as a car six gear speed box but it is a little bit harder get over 
well on my side. Yeah, it is a little bit harder to get it into gear sometimes. Clutch. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm quite enjoying actually, something different driving a manual for a change. Manual truck, so, well, you say truck, it's a little, little you know, puddle jumper. <laughs> but uh, it's better than nothing, isn't it? It's better than sat at home. I've got an interview, another interview on Saturday with another tipper company. Sent them my CV. Uh, quite late actually in the evening and first thing the next morning they sent me an email back saying call us uh, my director saw your email and is very uh, keen to get you on board so that could be quite good I'm not going to say too much just yet oh there's something on the road there so yeah I'm not going to say who the company is just yet because uh, Actually, yeah, I can say here it is. It's for Earthline. So, yeah. Sent my CV to Earthline. They're based in Marlborough and Farringdon. Very equally distant. I don't know exactly which branch they keep their trucks at. Is it both? Is it one? I don't know. I know I've got to go to Marlborough for the interview on Saturday morning. So, yeah, by the time this video goes out, that would have been and gone. So, yeah, wish me luck. It may get it. I may not get it. I don't know. Um, but it's tipper work as well. So yeah, that's uh, that's what else is on the cards. I um, the guy, the company I'm working for. I can't say who I'm doing the work for because I haven't been given explicit permission to uh, to vlog. So what that means is I won't be showing you any company logos, uh, and the premises I deliver to, I won't be um, won't be showing you exactly where I'm delivering either. Especially this first one because it's a farm. And when I um, when I phoned him, what lane do I want to be in? I need to be in that lane. When I phoned him up earlier asking for directions, I said, Hi, hi mate, yeah, I've got a delivery for you later. I said, uh, I just, just want directions, really, into, um, into your place. And rather than just tell me straight away where he is, he wanted to know who I was, who I was working for, what I'm delivering. So he's, he obviously doesn't want everybody knowing where he lives or his farm is, which is understandable. So I won't be uh, saying where I'm going exactly. Where's that coming from? But I will show you the, the tight lane because quite a tight lane. <laughs> right, we are now about 10 minutes away or so. And um, <laughs> the fuel situation is it's now between a quarter and a half. It's going down way too quick for my liking and I don't think I'm going to make it back unless I fill it with fuel. Now, I need to find a fuel station. I'm pretty sure there's a BP one down the road, I think. So, I'm hoping we're going to pull in and get some fuel on 3.6 metres high, 11 feet 6, which should be fine. I'm only in a little lorry, so it should be right. The problem I got is I don't actually know what site the fuel tank is on, which could be an issue. Uh, yeah, I generally don't know. That is a BB garage, okay. Uh, right. Let's get some fuel, because that is a little bit concerning, how fast it's going down. Second exit. Get into gear. Thank you. I need to jump out and just check to see what side it's on. Just park here a sec. I appear to be tangled up. Right, neutral handbrake. That was not neutral. Okay, I think it's the passenger side. Right. It is the passenger side. Why did that stall then? Could I? No idea. 
Right, here's passenger side. Why is that on? Passenger side, so I'm going to get behind this van. And fill up when he leaves, and then I can get out as well. Neutral, handbrake. Hey! <laughs> uh, right, so yeah, I've got, got a fuel card here, so. This is very concerning. In fact, right now, the fuel is on zero. I think it's a faulty gauge. If I just show you that. It's actually on zero now. So, yeah, I'm, I just want to double check because I don't know how much fuel is in there and obviously I don't want to break down. So it's irresponsible of me to uh, carry on. So we're going to fill up. Okay. Ugh. We filled her up. We got uh, 60 quid in, <laughs> 45 litres. Um, which means we were not empty. It's definitely a faulty uh, fuel gauge, 100%. Right, let's put the receipt there. At least now I know I've got a full tank of fuel, do you know what I mean? Because the issue was that uh, the fuel gauge said three quarters before I left, then it went down to half quite quickly, and then between half and a quarter, and then most recently, zero. <laughs> it actually said zero. Unless I needed to have the engine on for it to uh, tell me. But the fuel light was on and everything, so. Anyway, never mind, we've filled up now. We know we're okay. For the time being, anyway. Next issue is ad blue. <laughs> Uh, it says I've got a quarter of a tank of ad blue. So, uh, uh, well, it says just under a quarter from this morning, so I'm hoping that's going to be okay. Nice looking Scania. Away we go. Right. Less than 10 minutes away now from the first drop. Uh, I told him I was going to be there for about half past 10. It's now going to be about quarter to 11, but never mind. I had to double check the fuel. I, I couldn't, I couldn't not check the fuel. I mean, the fuel gauge was obviously not right, so I had to check. Uh, I have a right to check. If I run out of fuel right now and I break down here, I'm just causing havoc. So I'm glad I checked anyway. Anyway, let's go. Right, we're just around the corner. Lay by here. We got to go into the lay by and then an immediate left-hand turn, 180 degree turn. He said. Go down a country lane, single track lane, and then uh, I should see him. <sighs> find the gear, find the gear. Fifth gear. No, no, that's the one. <laughs> Losing a bit of momentum going up that hill. Yeah, I need to get used to driving <laughs> with a gear stick in a lorry. I know it's the same as a car. I don't crunch gears in a car, but it is a case of finding the right gear. It really is going up a hill and I'm trying to change gear. Right, I've got to hope I can actually get into it because the lorries could quite easily have uh, blocked the entrance. On Google Maps there's a, there is a lorry blocking the entrance. In the gear, in gear, first gear, here we go. Right, down here, restricted byway. Woo! Doesn't look too bad actually. I don't know how far down I've got to go. Although I am going to slow down a bit because this is quite slippery. Wouldn't want to be meeting another vehicle coming down here, would you? definitely don't want to be bringing an arctic down here, that's for sure. I'm hoping the rain's going to hold off because we've got to handle this off. It's 120 uh, centimetre long lengths. 
but there's only a 20 of them, so it shouldn't be too bad. Pass in place there. The clutch is all the way down. I think I'm changing gear too fast. I need to go a bit slower. But that clutch and clutch is all the way down then. Right. I'm going to turn the cameras off now because I don't want to show exactly where he is, but it's going to be somewhere down here. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, I thought I'd just uh, take this time to quickly show you. So we got a timber on the bottom, timber on the top. It's all got to come off on the next job. Right, we're just reversing back because there's no room for us to uh, reverse or spin round where we were, just was. I'm just trying to mine the trees, mine the logs. Going down is all right because it pushes your mirrors in if need be. And they seem to be quite st quite tough. But uh, I'm actually struggling here. First gear, come on. There's those logs on the right hand side. I'm getting very close to them. We're very, very close to those logs. And stones. Right, there we go. We're going to swing it round a bit now. I've got to adjust my mirror because I can't see anything out of that mirror now. First gear, there we go. Yeah, they said just spin round here. It's a bit muddy. Very muddy. Woo! I do not like that bank. I'm glad I'm small. <laughs> right, we're now facing the right way. I've got to put that mirror in. Because I can't quite see through the bottom one. So let me go do that quickly. Uh, how's that? That's much better. Yeah, like, <laughs> reversing out of that is harder than it looks. Turn the hazards off. Um, you've got twigs on the left-hand side, you've got stones on the right-hand side. Right, before we go, we just need to put the postcode in for the next place. Uh, uh, uh. Excellent, right, that's calculating the route. Before we go, I always like to just double check the route, make sure it's uh, adequate. Uh, so we're going, going up towards Oxford, up to there, down the A40, over the M40. You will arrive at your destination at 11.58. Cool, looks easy enough. And to get home from from there, it would be straight on the um, 420, I suppose. Actually, no, because we're not going to that side of Swindon, we're going to the other side of Swindon. Yeah, 
no, that, anyway, that job was easy enough. It was all handball off that there were two young lads there to help me, which makes me sound old saying that, two young lads. Um, this next drop, the rest of it's all being forklift off the back of me. <laughs> I hope so, anyway, because <laughs> they're heavier. They're the heavy ones. What we just delivered was looks like a little job that you could do in a van, going to like your local builder's merchant. A tiny amount. But yeah, we're going to crack on. It's a 50 minute drive to the next place. Should be there for about lunchtime. Uh, we might be able to get back without actually requiring a break because we wouldn't have gone over working time or driving time. Didn't start to 8 o'clock today. Um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. So I can actually work until 2 o'clock before requiring a break. And uh, we get back in less than four and a half hours driving time as well. So I won't need a break before I get back. When I get back, I might need to put it on break for 15 minutes or so. Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I might. If they're forklifting it off, then maybe I'll get a break in while they're doing that. Go to a shop or something. Looks like there's some shops nearby. We will see. Anyway. It's much easier getting out of this lane going up a hill than it is coming down because we're actually going up. If coming down you might lose control if you brake too hard. Going up you need to try and keep your momentum. Oh it might be hard getting out of this lay-by. Satnav's telling me to go right but also go out the entrance of the lay-by which is a bit of a naughty way of doing it. Let's see what we've we got. Actually, it might be the easiest way of doing it because of that trap there. Clear left, clear right. Easy peasy. Right, let's go. Got 25 miles to cover. Okay, you join me about 40 minutes later or so. We're just about a mile away from our next job. Get up this hill, change gear, slowly, and it goes in. <laughs> I think I've been changing gear maybe too fast for the lorry, which is why I'm getting a little bit of crunch in every now and then. But uh, we'll be all right. Sit gear, there we go. Um, my mate is off work tomorrow because he's, uh, he's injured himself and um, he drives a tipper lorry for a company I used to work for right at the beginning. I'm not going to mention names. Anyway, um, I might be filling for him tomorrow with that company. So, uh, happy days. That'll be right. I'll have to wait and see. Like I said, I, I did have work planned for tomorrow and then they changed it. It got cancelled. And then this job wanted me for two days, but because I already had work for the Friday, I could only say yes to Thursday. So they put someone else in for tomorrow. And now and then that shift got cancelled, I had Friday. So when I asked for tomorrow, they said, no, we've already booked it out. So, um, unfortunately, I operate on a first, base, uh, first come, first serve basis. If someone books me in for that day, that's it, I'm booked. I only once have I cancelled a shift, and that's because I really wanted to get in with another company. That's where me and uh, the guys, Red Legend, stayed when we uh, did some filming with Daff. Was it Daff we did filming with? Yeah, we stayed there, Double Tree and Hilton. When we did the Daff Driver Challenge, me, uh, Drug J, Scott Andrews, and Kev T, we all stayed there for the night. Oh, talking of, I don't know whether I should say this because uh, we haven't spoken about it yet, but we're actually all meeting up this weekend. So if, uh, in Bristol, so if you're seeing this vlog on a Saturday or Sunday, well specifically Saturday, if you're seeing it Saturday, we're, uh, we've seen each other today, we've uh, been getting some footage or whatever, we'll see, <laughs> gonna go bowling. Right, it's a left hand turn coming up, and then he said park on the right, the guy who normally drives, he said park on the right hand side and, uh, and do both the curtains, and they'll unload you. Was it this one? Yeah, it was here. Oh, there's already a truck here, look. He did say, just come in here. Oh, 
they got timber on as well. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna spin around, but it might be a bit tight. I could drive in there, can't I? And then just reverse back out like he has. So I span down the right way. Mind you, I got two lots to offload. I'm just going to drive in here. He did say wait, but I'm just going to drive in here. Because I'm blocking the main road. I can reverse back out if need be. Handbrake on, neutral. Right. Let's go say hello, see what the crack is. Okay, so you join me in the back of the truck. Uh, you've just taken off the first load that was there. Yeah, so I do these two sides now. Uh, and the, the rain has just lasted down. So I thought, the driest place to be at the moment is inside here, so. so. There's a lot of wood down here on the back. Uh, I haven't been told it needs to come off, so I'm going to keep it on there. Yeah, that's the rest of me going on. Proper rain of it. Proper, proper rain of it. We are done. Ugh, everything is now offloaded. Um, we just got to put our postcode into where we're going. Uh, yeah, it does sound okay for it. I know how to get back, but I just like to know. I've said it many times, I like to know what the traffic's like. Also, it gives me time to clear up the windscreen a little bit because it's a bit misty in here. Uh, where are we going? Right. Uh, uh, Excellente. That's where we're going. Uh, two hours, 20 minutes of, uh, of driving time. Yeah, we're plenty, plenty good enough. Uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna wait for the windscreens to clear up a little bit and then, uh, and then we'll make our move. Right, let's get out of here. Oh, 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 paperwork's going everywhere. hazards on as well. There's a, a Volvo there, black Volvo. He's been sat in that car for a while. There's plenty of room behind me for him to get out. So I hope he wasn't waiting for me to move because I've been here a while. <laughs> right. Ugh. Hazards off. We need to go right out of here. This might be hard to get out of. That's quite a blind turn on the left. So a roundabout down there. No, there is no roundabout down there, but there is traffic. This might be hard to get out of. This might take a while. We might have a gap. No. We've not got a gap. That white car just flashed. As if to say, out I come. But didn't actually let me out. I think he was flashing the other car. Which is why you never just go when someone flashes, you always check. Uh, yeah, anyway, as I said, I need to make a phone call now because uh, 
I might be on the tippers tomorrow covering from a mate. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. I don't think I've got the, I don't think I've got the relevant cards that I might need. No, I've got an epic card. I do have an epic card still, it's still valid. So that might be alright. Yeah, we can make that. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, so we're on our way back now. The weather's just turned miserable. Uh, our ETA back to the base is before two o'clock and I'm scheduled to work until quarter five. So I've got a funny feeling they will ask me to go to another branch and do something else, which is fair enough. So uh, yeah, we, we will see. We will see. And I will see you in a bit. Just come off the uh, M4. What uh, lane do we need? We need all other roads. We're not going into Swindon. I know. Uh, yeah, we can get there this lane. This is the lane we need. Right, so, oh, get into gear. Yeah, we're heading towards Wooden Bassett. I'm not going to say exactly who I'm working for. But uh, yeah, we're about 10 minutes away from the yard, so I thought I'll uh, come and say hello and then goodbye. <laughs> um, today's not been too bad, nice and easy. I don't think today is going to be completely over with. I might need to go back out, in which case you might see me again. Uh, better not go across there. Yellow lines. Yeah, we'll stop anyway. Ooh, a bit of traffic down there. Yeah, so I'm scheduled to work until quarter to five. Uh, up past quarter to five is overtime. Um, and uh, it's only quarter to two now, so I've still got another three hours of work and I'm only ten minutes away from the yard, so I'm going to pull into the yard, see what they say. They might ask me to go to Cown, which is the next town along. Um, I might have to pick something up from there, or deliver there, I don't know. They might have another load for me, so we will see, we will see. But uh, for now, I'm going to say bye. Thank you very much for watching. Really, really do appreciate it. Tomorrow is confirmed. I am doing some tipper work tomorrow on the aggregate side, so delivering tarmac, um, apparently to Harwell, apparently. So uh, I will see, oh, can't find it, grind it, I might, I might vlog tomorrow, I might not, we will see, but uh, if, the, if this, if, what's he doing? Oh, he's letting the um, Hurst go. If, um, if, if this is it for today then thank you very much for watching do appreciate it until next time drive safe and i will see you soon you're eating a burger how dare you eat a burger i'm hungry <laughs> see you later